Hey guys, welcome back. It's officially been over a week already since Reach released in MCC and MCC launched on PC. And for the first time in a long time, we've actually had a Halo launch go well. But that isn't to say that MCC and Reach are perfect. There are plenty of changes ranging from simple quality of life updates to larger additions and returning features that many agree would make the game infinitely more enjoyable. So, today I want to talk about 7 changes and additions to Reach and MCC that I personally think 343 should consider implementing to help sustain the game. So, let's waste no time and kick it off with the one that I know most of you clicked on this video for. The return of the credit system. Now, in an ideal world, would I love to see the system make a return? Absolutely. I absolutely adored the credit system. I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't perfect. But having a currency that you could earn and spend on any Spartan armor of your choosing really made Reach's unlock system like unique and special. And having Reach return without it does kind of suck, I'm not going to lie. However, do I think realistically that 343 will bring it back? No, sadly not at all. If they were to make XP and currency the same thing again, they'd have to overhaul the entire progression system, go back and reevaluate all the armor and unlock values, and then also add UI elements and other stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, it'd be fantastic if they would do, but realistically, it's just far too much work given what they've still got on their plate porting the rest of the games to PC. So, let's instead take a look at what they could maybe do with what they already have to improve it. So, right now, the unlock system is quite literally pointless. Every time you level up, instead of just being given the armor for leveling, you have to go to the progression UI and manually spend the season point that you got by leveling to unlock the next tier, which then gives you the armor. It is totally and utterly redundant. Why not just award the armor on level up instead? And then on top of this as well, not only is every single tier, and by extension every single cosmetic, the exact same price, one season point, but everyone unlocks the armor in the same order because it's 100% linear. Unlike an original Reach where multiple pieces of armor were made available to purchase at each level, which led to people rocking completely different armor permutations as they leveled up, everyone now just unlocks all the armor at the exact same rate in the exact same order. So 90% of people's Spartans just look identical and will continue to do so for a while, which given Reach's in-depth customization is a real shame. So to fix all of these conundrums, here's what I propose. First off, completely do away with all the linearity. The biggest thing limiting player choice right now is that everyone is forced to unlock the armor in the exact same order at the exact same pace. Make it so any tier can be unlocked at any level, or maybe make it so every five levels you unlock the ability to purchase the next 10 tiers or something to give it a bit more longevity. And then make the amount of season points that it costs to unlock each tier increase as the tiers increase. So then the higher tiers that give them more valuable armor require more season points to unlock, thus reintroducing any sort of value that these unlocks once had. And then, to counter the increase in season point cost per tier, make it so that the higher the rank, the more season points you're given for hitting that rank. And then maybe as well, throw in daily, weekly, and monthly challenges that reward season points as well, and you know what? We are golden. That way, season points fill the role that credits once did a lot more accurately, but at the same time, it doesn't require gutting the entire progression system and UI. I mean, granted, it's still not as good of a system as credits, in my opinion, but it's far, far better than what we have right now. 343, please. Next up, the XP system. Now, firstly, I cannot describe how good it is to finally have a progression system in MCC, but it needs some work. Firstly, we need to be able to earn XP from more than just multiplayer and online firefight. Earning credits, albeit a lot less of them, from Campaign, Customs and Forge in Original Reach made it feel like you could sort of do anything in the game and still be rewarded. Nothing felt like a waste of time, but in MCC, that's not the case. I mean, getting no rewards whatsoever for Campaign or anything custom-based 
really sucks, especially for people who maybe aren't that into multiplayer and just want to play campaign. There's no way at all for those people to unlock any armor, which, may I remind you, actually applies to campaign in this game. So if you ask me, having these modes reward you with XP is something that needs to happen. And also, maybe even go the extra mile and add challenges for campaign and these other modes that reward you with XP and season points as well, just to give these players a little bit more chance to earn more XP and season points. And secondly, the XP cap right now is far too low, specifically for performance. So you get XP for performance based on how many medals you get in a game. And right now, the amount of performance XP that you can get is hard capped at 8,000 which seems like a lot, but it's really easy to get that. In just like a six to seven minute game of team doubles, I can very easily hit that cap with like only a few double kills and maybe the odd killing spree or something. Basically, that cap is far too low and should definitely be increased. Also, maybe bring back the slot machine from Original Reach. It was a little small detail, but it was a really nice little touch that made the progression in that game just that bit more satisfying. Right, so this next one has been one of my top complaints since day one of MCC in 2014, the UI. Now, don't get me wrong, I know how incredibly complex of a beast MCC is. There's like 11 engines or so in this one game, and the UI has to accommodate all of those engines and games at the same time, so I imagine that it's inherently harder to design and optimize than any other UI out there. But... That doesn't mean that I'm going to let any issues with it slide. First off, the overall jankiness of it. Now, compared to classic Halo 2, Halo 3, and Reach, the menus in MCC in general are just not a great experience. They are better on PC, but they still just seem slow and cumbersome and not particularly nice to use. I think my biggest issue right now with them is how long the transitions between menus are. They take so long, so navigating the menus ends up taking far longer than it probably needs to. Then there's the grossly underutilized player details screen. MCC now has full Spartan customization, a full ranking system and leveling system and XP. And all we can see on the player details screen is a tiny brief overview of XP, your rank, and your avatar, basically a PNG of a random Halo character. Now, I have no idea how hard this would be to do, but in a perfect world, this screen would show your highest rank, your XP and progression rank in big colors, big, bold colors, and also a preview of your Reach Spartan, rendered in Unreal Engine 4 just like the customization screen. Maybe one of the avatars could even be a real-time render of your Spartan, so if you wanted a specific avatar from another game, then you could have that. Or instead, if you wanted to show off your Reach Spartan, then you could. Best of both worlds. And lastly, on the UI front, some of it just looks a little bit unfinished still. I mean, the player option the screen doesn't look finished, the map and game mode browser is really legacy, and it is in a desperate need of a drop-down menu. It's actually unreal how much easier and accessible classic Reach's menus were in this regard, like just a simple list with submenus. I know this is moving into complete UI overhaul territory, but I do think that at least at some point in the future, it needs doing. MCC's UI is pretty out of date now, and a complete overhaul would do it absolute wonders. This next one is also kind of UI related, so I figured that I'd mention it now. Bring back the veto system. In some playlists, certain map game type combos seem to have a far greater weighting than others. For example, Penance Team Slayer in Team Hardcore, and it is so annoying playing the exact same map like five times in a row. Now, don't get me wrong, Original Reach's map selection feature was a bad idea, because it just led to everybody picking the same map and game type over and over again. But the veto system was near perfect. Like the map and game type? Cool, don't do anything. Don't like one or the other? Hit X and get a chance to randomly roll for another. I feel like vetoing is easily the fairest form of map voting, and it's something that I see a lot of people asking for. So, please V43, let us veto. Okay, so now I just want to very briefly pivot a little bit away from talking about changes and look at an addition that would do absolute wonders to the entirety of MCC, mod tools. 
Now, this one is an absolute no-brainer. It's something that 343 have already talked about and want to implement at some point, but for now, we have no idea when that's going to be. Without mod tools, the mods already coming out are pretty damn great. From game cheat managing to almost entirely recreate Warzone in Firefight, to people getting fully functioning frigates in Forge World and even importing Desert Eagles into Halo Reach. There's already been a load of great mods which have been made without mod tools, which is great and I'm definitely going to make a dedicated video about some of these at some point soon. But with mod tools, people would be able to do so, so, so much more. From custom map creation to custom assets being added more easily, mod tools would make a bloody beautiful addition to MCC. I mean, just look at what they've managed to do with custom edition in Combat Evolved. People have managed to remake, like, Zelda PvP in that game with mod tools. So, please, 343, mod tools really would be the perfect cherry on top of this iconic Halo cake. And pivoting back to changes, there's currently a very weird issue with Halo Reach's movement. Now, I don't actually know if this applies to console or if it's just PC, but it definitely applies to PC. Crouch strafing feels really weird and almost impossible to do now. So, according to 343, the interaction between moving and crouching is exactly the same as the original Reach, but at least to me, it really doesn't feel that way. As long as your player model is moving in any way, you can't crouch. Now, I don't remember exactly if you could crouch while moving in original Reach, but I played that game a lot, and I used to crouch strafe like it was just muscle memory. Like, it got to the point in the last year of Reach where, like, I didn't even think about it. I just sort of did it when I was playing. It wasn't something that I consciously thought of. But now, like... I just can't seem to do it, and I know that many others are experiencing the same thing, finding it really difficult. I don't know if it's down to the increased frame rate or some other change that happened when Reach was partially upscaled, but either way, I really hope that 343 can find a fix for this. They are working on addressing it, thankfully, which is great to hear. I just hope they can manage to fix it, because crouch strafing was such an integral part of Reach's skill gap, and it's a real shame to not have it working properly. At least, I don't think it's working properly. Apparently it is. I, I'm not sure. It could just be that it's harder to do with keyboard and mouse, but either way, I really hope 343 can fix this. Another thing that absolutely needs addressing, despite their saying that it more than likely won't be, is controller aim assist on PC. Now, you've probably all heard about this, but it is too high. It is far too high. It needs to be retuned to accommodate the fact that the primary method of input on PC doesn't have any form of assistance built into it. Now, the issue with that is that 343 have said if they were to retune the aim assist on PC, then it would close the door for crossplay between Xbox and PC, which sucks. I really want to see crossplay between Xbox and PC with Reach and MCC somewhere down the line. But maybe, just, just maybe, there's a way that we can have our cake and eat it too. 343 have said that sometime soon, they're going to be adding search preferences to MCC, which is kind of like what Halo 3 and Halo Reach had, where you can prioritize searching for games where everyone is of a close skill level, or instead you can search for just the best connection possible. How about we add one more filter to that preference? Input method. Have an opt-in feature, a strictly opt-in feature, that allows me to only search for people using keyboard and mouse, or vice versa. That way, crossplay can still happen, and people don't need to worry about matching other controller users on PC. Win-win scenario. And maybe, if 343 are feeling extra spicy, maybe take it one step further and do what Modern Warfare does and have a small UI element in the pre-game lobby that shows what input method each player is using. Could honestly be pretty useful to avoid tilting in-game. And those are seven changes and additions that I would love to see added to Reach and MCC. However, we're not done yet. In typical Halo countdown fashion, I have two honourable mentions that I want to briefly touch on. Firstly, the number of ranked playlists. Now, I get that on Xbox, the ranked playlist menu is full because all the games on console are there already in MCC, and they all have their own ranked playlists, so if Reach were to come in and add like five or six, then it'd kind of clutter the menu a little bit too much. But on PC, seeing as Reach is the only game that's out right now, there are only two ranked playlists. Now, I really, really would love it if 343 would add some more. Throw in maybe Team Slayer and Team Objective and Team Doubles and maybe even Free For All or something. 
The two ranked playlists right now are Hardcore and Invasion, which in my opinion don't really cover much of Reach as a full game, if you get me. Whereas I think if they added the ones that I just listed, then the ranked offering for Reach would cover the game more generally, as opposed to just covering two very specific types of play. 343, three, please. And finally, a suggestion that I saw from one of you guys that I absolutely loved. So we know that 343 are considering adding GRD and also some other armors that were cut from Reach in future seasons. And as far as we know, they're just going to be added to the progression system for whatever season they are released in. However, PHD9 brought to light a pretty cool way that 343 could release this new armor with community challenges. Now, years ago, like 2016, Treyarch did something pretty similar with Black Ops 3 Zombies. If the community got like 500 million headshots or something, then new camos would be unlocked, and everybody loved it. It got so many people back on the game and grinding it again, and I feel like something similar with MCC would do wonders for player attention. Granted, it could be a lot of UI work, but still, it's a really cool idea that I know I've mentioned in the past before, and when I read PhD's comment, I absolutely had to bring it up again, so thank you very much, my friend. Thank you for bringing that up. 343, please. And so, that's all for today. Is there anything else that you would like to see added to Reach or MCC on the PC or the Xbox that I didn't mention in this video? Then let me hear it down below in the comments. I mean, personally, I would absolutely love to see a field of view slider on console. That's one feature that I really wish would start to get migrated over to console games more because it's something that I honestly find it quite hard to play games on PC without now. So, console players absolutely deserve to be able to change their field of view. 343, three, please. But yeah, anyways, I've got some really cool videos coming out over the next week that you guys are not going to want to miss, covering like a whole variety of different Halo things. I'm really excited to upload them, so hopefully you guys can get hyped for those bad boys. But for today, I'm going to end it right here. Massive thank you to Mitchell Bueller for becoming a Primordial over on Patreon, along with, of course, everybody else who continues to support me over there. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.